we've planted the flag over this, this past two decades, but now we have to get to scale and we have to get results uh, that are really impactful because I think, as you all know, we have made incredible progress but the numbers continue to be absolutely unacceptable for a country like the United States of America. And the only way that we can achieve that is that the private sector, the public sector, the philanthropic sector, and the programmatic sector really come together and work together. And so we were hoping that with venues like this and, and days like this, we would challenge each other to ask of each other what is necessary from your perspective, what the other sectors can do to help you invigorate the leadership and resource, uh, the resources of your community. You know, it's a great pleasure to be here with you today, not only um, because our office helps to lead the federal government's approach to mentoring with the Office of Public Engagement and the Corporation for National and Community Service, uh, but also as a mentor myself. As some of you may know, I've been a big brother for about 12 years now to a wonderful young man <laughs> named Adid. Adid. Adid and I met when I was a student at Boston University, and he was a six-year-old in Roxbury. Um, he had a great mom who was working really hard to make ends meet, and he had a father who was in and out of his life due to um, some stints in incarceration. I remember very clearly our first meeting at a conference room um, in downtown Boston at Big Brothers of Mass Bay. Any Massachusetts folks here, by the way? There we go. Um, I remember thinking, quite frankly, as I looked into Adid's eyes, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> you know, I could barely balance my exam schedule and my work-study job, and so how on earth would I live up to the expectations of this wonderful little kid who was looking at me in wide-eyed anticipation? But now, over a decade later, we've somehow worked it out. And Adid is a freshman at Morehouse College. I'm very proud of him. And Last January, right at this event, our First Lady helped launch the Corporate Mentoring Challenge, challenging businesses to take a hands-on role in the future of our youth by launching or expanding mentoring programs or providing resources and support to make the mentoring sector stronger. And since that launch, nearly 100 companies have taken up the challenge. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Business leaders and companies who have stepped up to the plate. Now let me turn for a few comments about Big Brothers Big Sisters and share the announcement that we made this morning, a press release that we made first thing this morning. As I said earlier, we decided roughly about 2005, right after our 100th year celebration when we were in Washington, that we were going to focus on what we achieve and why it matters. And this shift represented, in fact, a complete operating and marketing makeover of a 100-year-old iconic organization. But a makeover, the goal was to change everything almost everything except for the core essence of what we do, one-to-one -one mentoring. So in that regard, it sort of started with, we said, we actually not just have a mission statement, we developed an accountability statement that our whole organization signed on to. An accountability for three areas of youth outcomes, accountability for education success, accountability for the avoidance of risky behaviors such as truancy, and the social and emotional competencies that underline those educational and behavioral outcomes. If you work at a company, and you know United Way, we love our companies. If you work for a company like AT&T or Wells Fargo or Bank of America or Ernst & Young or Macy's or the countless others that are here today, please stand up. Thank you for all that you do. I have a feeling this is where we're going to get everybody out here, but if you work for a local state or national nonprofit that serves young people, Big Brothers Big Sisters, 100 black men, I've seen you here, communities and schools, get on your feet, please, and be recognized. We're closing in on it, ladies and gentlemen. If you're an AmeriCorps member, a volunteer yourself, or a mentor yourself, please stand up and be recognized. And what do you know? We are all 
still standing because underneath everything, what we all care about is helping young people succeed in school and life. And United Way, we have a motto, we call it Live United, but it's a motto that we think everybody can live up to. And so if you're with us and believe as we do in the power of mentoring and you want to see us expand and meet, reach more kids and improve more communities and see more diplomas and college graduations, we ask you to stand with us and work together. Across, across our organizations, we've got to put individual kids first. Uh, we have to think, uh, uh, put aside all that separates us and our boundaries and what makes us different and put those kids first and work together. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for what you do. Live United. Enjoy the rest of your summit, everybody. She previously served as Director of Child and Welfare Safety as well as Deputy Chief of the New York City Commission to investigate alleged police corruption. Besides her many credentials like Harvard for undergraduate schooling and law school, Leslie knows how to get agencies, government, business, universities, churches, civic organizations together to help youth. And you all know if you're sitting here that that's a real challenge and accomplishment. She can convince these organizations to work together and when she does, results happen. Among the many powerful initiatives for youth that Leslie has spearheaded, the Success Mentors is one of the newest and yet most compelling. She's gonna talk a little bit about it today but let me just say that this initiative serves over 4,000 students in New York City. I live in New York now, but I come from a small town in Massachusetts. The population of my town was 4,200 people. Leslie's work on this one mentoring model, just one of many projects, serves as many youngsters as my whole town. In New York, we don't do anything by half. It is an honor for the Mentoring Partnership to assist in this program, and I am pleased to introduce to you the chair and architect of this great model, Leslie Kornfeld. And here is where mentoring takes center stage. To reduce chronic absenteeism and to improve education and life outcomes for our at-risk students, Mayor Bloomberg created a task force two years ago, which you just heard about. We've piloted several initiatives at 25 schools with above average rates of dropout and absenteeism, and this year we're now piloting in 50 schools across the city. And when we looked at the data, talked to our principals and our students, guess which initiative had the greatest impact? I'll give you a clue, it starts with an M. <laughs> mentoring, but mentoring done right. Mentoring done with data, with an infrastructure, and with supports that can maximize the impact of our mentors. We found that students with full year mentors in our schools attended an additional 7,000 days of school last year. They outperformed students without mentors in our elementary and high schools in terms of attendance by impressive margins. And there was a school-wide impact as well. We had not necessarily seen this in past mentor programs at this scale before, 